So there's a big paragraph, right? Um, I'm gonna just say, this is, this is not conditional probability, but it's just probability for starters, but the conditional part's the hard part. So we've got these three sports, rugby, soccer, cross country, right? Rugby, soccer, cross country. Now the tricky thing is when you start to read it, right? 60 students, they try out for each of the three sports, but some of them try out for multiple sports and it's like they overlap, the groups overlap. Now that's the indication to you. If you have a look at the numbers, right? 32 for rugby, 29 for soccer, 15 for cross country. Even just looking at those three numbers, you can see they add up to more than 60, right? So you're like, okay, clearly, I'm double counting some of these and so what we want to do is work out which groups have been counted more than once and then we can answer all the questions that have come for us, okay? So because there are three things, what I'm going to ask you to do is, you got a pen there, right? Start by drawing up, we're going to have like a big box here and this will indicate all of our students, right? Everyone um, in the sample space, as it were. Now because there are three different options, um, I'm going to draw like a circle for each of the three things, right? So I'll have a rugby circle and then I'll have a soccer one and then I'll have a cross country one. And you can see, and I would label them accordingly as well, I've got other colours here. So if I call this, um, actually you know what, I'll stay with black just for now. This circle here, the top left one is rugby, this one is soccer and this one is cross country. So for instance, if you have a look back at the question, right, it tells you 32 tried out for rugby. So in this whole circle, there will be 32 people, right? But like, are there 32 here or here or here or here? I don't actually know how it's broken up. That's the tricky part, right? And so we can't start with the 32 and the 29 and the 15 because if we just put them on there, we've got more than 60. You're like, so what other information can I start with? So go all the way to kind of the end of the question they give you lots of numbers, right? The last piece of information that they give you before they ask you to draw a diagram, the last piece of information is kind of the most, um, it's the most specific, like it tells you about these five students and they did all three, right? So where on the diagram would those five students go if they did all three of the sports? Right, so um, this is helpful. If you have another color, you can, but if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm gonna put five students right there, okay? Now what this means is, I can kind of work backwards through the question, which is like a key problem solving strategy when you're like, I don't know where to begin. Often starting at the end is helpful. So now when you have a, if I literally go backwards, right? I know that five tried out for all three sports. Then it says eight tried out for rugby and cross country. So on my diagram, Here's rugby, here's cross country. So this is the overlap. So there's eight students in this group, but I've already counted five of them. Do you see that? So then in this little other spot, how many should I have? It's three, right? Uh, I might use red for this one. So there, the three and the five, there's my eight, right? So it's like, okay, eight tried out for rugby and cross country, tick. Again, going backwards. Nine tried out for soccer and cross country. So what number should I put here? Four. Can you tell me what to do next? Um, 11 for rugby and so that's this region here. So if there's 11 in total, then that leaves six. six. Very good. So that's six and five gives you the 11. Okay. And now we can go back one more layer. So remember, we started off saying there's 32 students who did rugby. So in this area, is the only remaining area where the rest of the 32 are. So if I do 32 and then I take away the ones that I've already counted, um, 11 plus three is 14. So then how many students do I have here? Hold on, yeah, yeah, they're very good. I'm asking you to carry the one in your head, okay. That's fine, there we go. So can you see now if I go 18, six, five and three, put them all together, there's the 32 they told us about at the start of the question, right? But now I know how it's broken down. Um, let's have a look at the other ones. Soccer, 29. So this should be 29, take away, how many do I already have? Very good. So that gives me how many just did soccer, right? And then the last one, 15 tried for cross country. So in total I've got 15, but I've already counted, that looks like 12. So there's only three who just did cross country, okay? 
Now, if you have a look, um, the five, the three, four, five, six, which is just a coincidence, 18, 14, three, okay? Is this all the students? Now, one of the ways I can tell is if you have a look at the question, just have a look at the parts A, B, C, and D. See how part D, it says like, was there anyone who didn't try out for a sport? So they're already like posing the question, is there anyone that should be on the outside of these three circles, right? So let's have a look here. Right at the start, we said um, the rugby players was 32, right? 32, so I don't need to add up all of these again. I already know there's 32 in this circle. So if I say um, all of the students is 60, but then what I wanna take away, just like I took away in these groups, right? Um, I'll take away the 32 rugby players. That's everyone in this circle. Over here, there's 18. And then the last group I haven't counted is this three, like that, right? So when I'm adding that up, that looks like 53 to me. So 60 take away 53 is seven, right? So that's how I know by looking at the rest of these numbers, oh, there are seven students not accounted for, so they didn't try out for anything. Does that make sense? In some ways, from here, like that's all the hard work. I actually think the rest of it is not that difficult. But just, just for the sake of it, let's see if we know what we're doing, right? Part A says, probability of a random student trying out for one sport. So, can you help me work out on the diagram, which of the students, maybe you can refer to my colors or things like that, which students can you see only tried out for one sport? Yeah, it's these ones that are circled, isn't it, right? So 18, 14, three, that's my, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Favorable outcomes, they're the ones I'm interested in. And exactly as you said, I'm selecting from all the students at random, right? So that's why you divide by 60. I don't really know what that is, but your calculator can do that, right? Um, let's keep going, I don't think we need to write this. Try it out for exactly two sports. What's exactly two sports mean? Yeah, very good. So it's two sports, but not three, because it says exactly two, right? So you'd add up three, four, and six, divide by 60. When it gets to part C, it says try it out for at least two sports. So it includes those ones we just counted, but it would also include, if you went for three sports, that's still included in at least two. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you have to be quite careful with the wording. Um, these questions, often a single word will change the kind of fraction that you create, so you get a completely different answer. How does that feel? You okay with that? Yeah.